Hi everybody, today I'm going to introduce the StreamSets data collector, which is the core component of the StreamSets continuous ingest system. What we have here is a drag and drop UI for building data pipelines, and we provide a lot of different origins, destinations, and processors out of the box to actually build these, these pipelines. So where we can get data from are places like S3, flat files, uh, HTTP client is going to be RESTful endpoints for service-oriented architectures, or potentially things like social media streams, relational databases, a variety of different message queuing systems. Uh, UDP is also going to be things like syslog or collect d or other sorts of metric uh, endpoints. In terms of where we can send the data, uh, it's kind of a who's who of the Hadoop and related ecosystem. Things like HDFS, HBase, Hive Streaming, relational databases, Kafka, Solar. We also support Cassandra even though it's not shown on this UI at the moment. And then in terms of processors, we provide a lot of different transformational capabilities, routing uh, and uh, other transformation tools. So things like handling personally identifiable information, we have hashers and maskers, uh, GOIP location tools uh, to, to name a few. So some of the high level themes of the StreamSets product are one, to make it extremely simple to get data into the downstream analytical systems. So everything here is very configuration driven. For example, this Kafka destination uh, is just configured with the brokers that I want to send data to, as well as the topic that I'm going to write to. Similarly, if I'm writing to HDFS, I'm just gonna specify the FS name, and then I can specify a parameterized directory template. So if, for example, I'm writing to uh, a part partitioned hive table, I can land data into the right directories just by templatizing based on a timestamp or some other partition field. So all of that's just supported out of the box. Now the other high level theme that I want to talk about is the idea of drift. Basically what drift is, is the understanding that everything changes uh, throughout your data infrastructure over time. It evolves. And data infrastructure tends to evolve across a number of different axes. So for example, one axis is infrastructure. So infrastructure drift could be just there's a new Apache component that was released and if you want to integrate that into your existing data infrastructure, that's going to introduce drift. Another common type of drift is going through major, major version upgrades. So typically what happens when you go through a major version upgrade is you spin up a new uh, cluster. Let's say you know we're working with, with Hadoop. Hadoop 2.x is, is currently the standard that most people are working with, but Hadoop 3.x will, will soon be released. And given that it's a major version upgrade, it's going to introduce binary incompatibilities. And so typically the way that organizations deal with these sorts of binary incompatibilities is to spin up a new cluster using the new software, split off the, uh, or replicate the data streams to the new cluster from the old cluster and then do user acceptance testing and eventually promote the new cluster into production and decommission and sunset the old cluster. But the challenge is that because of compatibility matrices, only certain uh, Hadoop ecosystem components will work with other versions of Hadoop or you know things like that. And so it becomes a real logistical challenge to actually manage this, uh, this data replication as well as this user acceptance testing. StreamSets deals with this by providing a level of class loader isolation between each of the stages in the pipeline. So for example, in this HDFS des destination, it's very easy for me to just specify that uh, I want to write to a particular version of a cluster. If I want to send data to a new version of that, of, of that infrastructure, it's very easy for me to just add in a new component, switch the version of the library that it's writing to, and now I can write to binary incompatible versions of, uh, of Hadoop from within a single pipeline. So it's very easy to manage those sorts of logistics. Another type of drift is semantic drift. So semantic drift usually appears when data is changing or, uh, for example, today everybody's using IPv4 data, but at some point in the not too distant future, people will have to start migrating to IPv6. And so because IPv6 is a fundamentally different structure than IPv4 addresses, it's going to become necessary to change how the downstream analytics actually work with the data. So understanding those sorts of changes becomes really critical and being able to handle them as the, the pipeline is running becomes extremely important. Now, the way that you can do that in a tool like StreamSets, for example, is 
maybe uh, putting preconditions on a stage. So for example, when I was building this demo, I was working with taxi data. And what I found was that uh, these taxi rides were sometimes appearing with completely insane latitudes and longitudes, and I was seeing taxi rides that started in the middle of the ocean, and I figured this probably isn't correct, so I wanted to pull that data out and isolate it. So what I've done here is I've actually created some preconditions to essentially specify a bounding box around my data. And when data doesn't match these preconditions, it's going to be sent to an error stream, um, which can then be used to uh, reprocess and reintegrate that data automatically. So we're going to have the opportunity to, um, to really get that data back into our systems quickly and deal with any issues that we came up uh, or, or that we ran into along the way. The last type of drift that is, is probably the most common type of drift that people encounter is schema drift. So what happens if you're loading JSON data and you onboard a new event type or you know there's a new field that pops up that you've never seen before? Or maybe you're reading in from a relational database and someone runs alter table uh, add column on that database and suddenly you're left with a, a schema that doesn't match what you were expecting. In traditional tools, typically what you would have to do is specify each individual column and if if, a, if the, the data diverges from the schema that you've pre-specified, someone's going to actually have to go back and redefine that, that pipeline, uh, redevelop that, that data flow. To avoid that, what StreamSets has done is taking a very data-centric approach to, uh, to this data and to interpreting schemas. So for example, here on this directory origin, all I have to do is specify what type of data am I actually working with. So in this particular case, I had delimited data, uh, and here I've just specified that it's CSV and that I've got a header line, and that's really all I have to do. Even if a new field shows up, we're going to interpret that schema as the data is coming in uh, and be able to work with it throughout the pipeline without having to actually go back and modify the pipeline at all. So this brings up kind of an interesting discussion, which is, well, you know, CSV, for example, is a very ordinal-based or position positionally oriented data type. What happens if my fields arrive transposed or out of order? How do we deal with that? The way StreamSets handles this is that, is that we marry the uh, schema information with the actual data so that you're actually able to refer to the data by the field name rather than a positional index. So for example, in this cash and card selector, I was sending credit card transactions to the upper portion of my pipeline and, credit, or, and cash transactions to the central portion of my pipeline. And I'm able to do that just by referring to the field by name. So even if my data arrives out of order or if the fields are transposed, this is still going to do what I intend rather than what the schema specifies. So it really allows me to, um, to build more resilient pipelines and to really handle this type of schema evolution uh, as the data is coming in. In summary, the two major themes of StreamSets are really to enable organizations to get data into Hadoop and the related ecosystem very easily in a configuration-driven manner, but also plan for evolution of their data infrastructure, whether it's schema, semantic, or infrastructure drift.